Hello, my viewers and subscribers. Welcome to another episode of Jamaica Politics Uncovered. So guys, today we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about a few people, few events, key events taking place in the political community in Jamaica today. First up, guys, there are some people who are very pissed off at PJ Patterson, former Prime Minister of Jamaica. It's no surprise that they are, but you know... Sometimes people have short memories, but hear why they're mad. Number one, they put PJ on flyer to go into St. Catherine to support Alfred Dawes. PJ did not show up. PJ went to UAE and he was asked about the Republic decolonization journey that Jamaica's on. And he was also asked about the whole citizenship, dual loyalty dual allegiance thing with Mark Golding and he spoke his mind and he said his piece but these people who are getting mad at PJ the risers I wonder if them forget that PJ is still mourning the loss of Melissa guys the first thing is to remember these people lied about Melissa's debt they lied about her cause of death and they remained silent about it. They were all at Melissa's murder scene. PJ don't forget, you know. You understand, guys? PJ don't trust them as far as he can throw them. These are people who participated in this elaborate cover-up of his goddaughter, leaving her three children behind, including the lead of the opposition, Mark Golding. Remember, it was Mark Golding who first came out and told the nation that Melissa died and he gave this impression that Melissa died either peacefully or in her sleep or naturally and that there was no criminal involvement when the truth and the fact proved that Melissa was murdered by her husband, Silvera. You understand, guys? So... I don't know what these people expected from PJ. You can't expect to do these kind of things to people and expect them to just get over it and come join you. Melissa died November of 2023. It's barely a year since then. And PJ is an elderly man and he is mourning the loss of his goddaughter. It is bad enough that that happened and the lies and the cover-up, he did not attend her funeral. He did not attend her funeral to pay his final respects to her. That's horrible, you know? So people have become so selfish, so self-centered. They have these high expectations for the people they harm. And PJ wants nothing to do with them because in addition, they have no manners, they have no respect, and they have no sense of decency. They have no decorum. They lie. They're vulgar. The propaganda, all of it, PJ wants nothing to do with. Alfred Dawes is one of them who showed up at Melissa's murder scene. And he did not tell anybody what he went there to do, who called him there, and all these things. The little bit of blood comment, the six weeks of silence, the aneurysm argument and died in her sleep, the whole entire cover-up, guys, elaborately. PJ is still in mourning and he does not trust those people as far as he can throw them that is the fact of the matter so the only people they should be mad at is themselves like seriously who would ever trust to be around these people who would ever want to be a part of anything that they're doing people i know wouldn't want to this is very hurtful and painful and i'm sure that it probably took a toll on PJ or took some time off his life. These people have blood on their shoulders. I don't wrong PJ. Plus, he didn't say anything wrong. He did not say anything wrong. As a lawyer, he stood up for and with the Constitution, and PJ don't want no destruction come take him at 90 years old being around those people. He gave them his full support in 2020. When they claim that they won the leadership of the party, he had no ill will, no animosity toward them. Since then, he has lost his goddaughter in this elaborate murder cover-up. And then Mark Golding has since been exposed as being a dual citizen with dual loyalty, which he concealed 
and told nobody. The deception and the betrayal is real and PJ wants nothing to do with them. Next up, guys, let's talk about Daryl Vaz real quick. Yesterday, somebody sent me a link to a speech that Daryl Vaz made at the conference of Juliet Holness. And he said some things that I think are important to highlight. The first one is that he vows to take Dayton Campbell to the Privy Council if he must in regards to the defamation lawsuit he has against Dayton Campbell. Dayton Campbell basically alluded to Faz being a murderer on the political platform and he has filed a lawsuit against Dayton Campbell for defamation. Daryl Vaz also highlighted the fact that in this political climate that we are seeing, the personal attacks and those kind of abnormal, vicious, vile behavior should not be normalized and it should be frowned upon. And he encouraged his supporters not to engage in it and not to accommodate it. It ruins people's reputations. It put people's lives in danger. It put people's safety at risk. It causes psychological distress and all sorts of things. I totally agree with this because one of the things that destroy the PNP is the personal attacks on each other, the lies, the character assassination, the vicious attacks on women. These are the things that destroy the People's National Party. So, Daryl Vaz was right, but hear what he had to say, guys. In my sectoral debate, closing of the type of personal attacks that are being exchanged in the politics of today. It reminds me of the 70s, and we don't want to go back there. So I'm calling on my colleagues on all sides, anybody who is a politician, when they go low, you go high. Campaign on your performance. Campaign on your strategies and your plans. Don't campaign on negativity against your opponent or against persons that are not on the same side as you. It does nothing for politics and it does nothing for Jamaica. As a matter of fact, it brings Jamaica into disrepute. And I'm seeing a pattern and I don't like it. So as the person who can stand here and talk openly about that, up to last week, I had to get an apology from a youngster for defamation in terms of something he posted. And you know what I did? I thought about the fact that I'm a father and what would happen to my son if I pursued him legally and I took the decision to forgive him. But don't forget that I still have the General Secretary of the People's National Party in court and may not ease him none at all. We're going all the way to the Privy Council in that one because we need to set an example. Guys, this is not politics, not at all. If all you can do is come to the platform and tell life on people and mess up people's name and try to harm people psychologically, this is not politics. And you know what? When they do things like that, people get down and dirty with them and everybody will turn the other cheek and everybody will go, go high when they go low. When they go low and people go lower, then, you know, the thing gets real nasty. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I totally agree with Vaz. Don't go low, but may I tell you no, the way all these people in the PNP today go low, you got to have some people who go lower and teach them a lesson. And that's what we have seen in our politics in recent times. Hopefully, in the near future, when they are no longer in our politics, then, you know, we'll get back to normal. I don't condone the things that they carry on with, but we are seeing, you know, people have to defend themselves sometimes too. And that's what it comes down to. I am by no means endorsing nasty, dirty political attacks on them something there. I do not. Anybody know me, know me always a lick up on them things there. But I am not the type of person who is going to turn the other cheek if someone dares to do that to me, you know, so... 
it goes both ways. But let us all try to, you know, speak out against it and name and shame the people who carry on with these things like Dayton Campbell and those who support Mark Golding. So Venetia Phillips joined the chat at the conference yesterday. She was present. She was given the platform and she spoke. She spoke particularly to the issue of Mark Golding's um, reluctance to renounce his dual citizenship or his dual allegiance to the UK. This has been a national topic of discussion, guys, since it was revealed on May 14th. We are almost a month later and Mark Golding has yet to stand up and choose Jamaica. And that really says a lot about who Mark Golding is and where his priority lies. I think, you know, the topic is pretty much exhausting, but people have to talk about it. It is a real thing. And we must not allow this to slide. Those who are on these political platforms and in the parliament, they need to continue the conversation and they need to continue shedding light to show that Mark Golding is unpatriotic and he has no real loyalty to Jamaica. Because if he did, no one would have to be forcing and hounding him to, you know, pledge loyalty to Jamaica. As we've said on this channel, guys, this is just exhausting. Frankly, it is disgusting that a man would be so arrogant in wanting to lead our country without, you know, showing that it's Jamaica and no place else. I don't know about you guys, but it's a bit disturbing to see that Mark Golding is still out there campaigning like nothing is happening. You know, like it's all good with his dual citizenship and as if Jamaica is just some little to place, you know, because, you know, nobody's going to say anything or do anything. Anyway, listen to what Venetia has to say. I'm saying to him, no, who not there again? We're going to mash down that line. But I tell you why he came with that. Because he was covering up a bigger lie. He knew even where we come from.
the 156 person who no subscribed up on the page. So to the I think I'm going to move you. Yeah, guys, so according to the Sunday Observer yesterday, a poll came out showing that 64% of Jamaicans are against dual citizenship or dual loyalty where the leader of the country is concerned. So that is a pretty good indication, I guess, of how the Jamaican people feel. And I think it's probably more than that. You know what I mean, guys? But, like, who does that? Nobody. You know what I mean? It's kind of kind of way out in a midfield for anybody would have the audacity to want to do something like that. You know? There's just too many conflicts of interest. And it's a selfish thing, basically, what it comes down to. But anyway, guys, make sure you're keeping it locked here to Jamaica Politics Uncovered for your latest political news, reviews, and updates. Guys, make sure you're subscribed. And you're inviting your friends over here so to come and hang out with us. Catch you in the next video.